Hi my loves, welcome back. We're going to be doing a fun vlog today. Zach and I are going to have a kind of date day with a little bit of work thrown in. Sometimes it's a lot easier to have a day date as a parent because bedtime is such a fraught time sometimes and also you're tired like I'm tired at the end of the day so I'd much rather spend some quality time in the day so that's what we're gonna do today I'm really excited but before we do I'm gonna do a little Monica Vinader unboxing which I'm really excited about you all know I love Monica Vinader I've been working with them a little bit recently but I have loved them for a long time they were the first brand that I went to for um, stacking rings. You'll know that this whole ear is Monica Vinader actually. My left ear is currently a Monica Vinader stack. I've been wearing my gold Monica Vinader rings a lot with my silver rings. I love the contrast. So yes, but let's do a little unboxing. I've got a few new bits to show you. Isn't that gorgeous? What a beautiful bracelet. I will obviously write everything down below. Oh, it's got a little Inez written on it. Can you see that? <gasps> How cute. The, wow, this is really, really beautiful. I believe you can get these in different sizes as well. And I ordered the small size, which is great because so many bracelets do not fit my teeny weak wrists. Like I think, oh, there we go. We did it, we did it. I want the Inez facing me. How gorgeous is that? So yeah, I got the smallest size in this, but I think they do three sizes, which is, as I say, like a big relief because so many braces do not fit me whatsoever. We've got another bangle here with a little diamond in it. How beautiful. I love these pieces. It's got a gorgeous chain here. Doesn't that look nice? I like the kind of simplicity of just wearing one Next as well. Um, I know I'm usually a stacker, but sometimes it's nice just to have one on. We've got a new ring. This is gorgeous. Look at that. It's like a beautiful knot style ring. How nice does it look with the other ones as well? And final piece to show you today. These are really beautiful. And I'm going to go with my ring really nicely. It's this little set of earrings. How cute are those? I love that kind of fluted style and it really looks nice. It's like a nice little detail when people are up close and personal with you and they can see it. Right, my loves, uh, we've got to make a move because we have got to, we're going to go see a film at like mid-morning and we've got to go. Um, but I do have a discount code for you. I will write it on screen now and I'll put it in the description box as well. <laughs> very intense I think I liked it but it was not a first date movie it's okay if you're eight years in uh, I'll collect my thoughts and chat to you more about it later but yeah and then we went to dinner dinner lunch at um, arcade which is if you're in the Tottenham Court Road area it's definitely worth a visit it's like one of those kind of like food market things but like a bougie one. They bring the food to your table via QR code. I have said you quite like that system. In places like that for sure. Um, similar to Bonnie and Wild in, Amer in, in America, in Edinburgh, which is also really nice. But yeah, what did you think? Did you like the food? The food was good, I thought. We did sample most of it. But yeah, we, we sampled things from all the different menus. They've got lots of different 
places in there. There's also a Thai place upstairs, which we'll probably return to at a different time. So it's really nice. Now, we just popped to the house and I filmed the first episode, as it were, of the house series. Hopefully, you're gonna enjoy and we're gonna do that regularly uh, as and when things, big things happen at the house or it kind of, the thing is with a big project, it's not like doing it over room by room. So in terms of separating the videos out, maybe it'll make total sense now I've started it, but maybe it would. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and make a video when it feels right and makes sense. But I have to say, if you've been following really avidly with the house, just been seeing everything I've said in all the vlogs, then there's probably no new information for you in there. But I just wanted it to serve as kind of like an introductory video, especially for anyone who is coming to me fresh for um, house renovation content specifically and doesn't want to dabble in <laughs> the rest of the stuff we've got going on here. But yes, but also maybe it will refresh those of you who have been following along for the last like three years almost three years since we bought that house um, <laughs> will refresh your memories and everything will be in one place so yes it's like a starter video but I don't think there's a lot of new information or even new things to see there's a few plastered few new plastered walls but a lot has been happening I think just behind the walls the, the roof's been redone that sort of thing um, nothing super super exciting internally since I last filmed but we're getting there and we're about to really start thinking about and designing the kitchen which is going to be really exciting so definitely please do have finally started some dedicated house content but anyway keep your eyes peeled for that should be coming to you soon but we're gonna head back now we need to go see our baby Got a little bit of hash here this evening. Very nice. Hi my love. So, so it is bath time for the baby. It is my 15 minutes of just chill time before I put it down and do all of the chores that I still have to do for the rest of the evening. But let's chat the Northman. I would love to talk, well to get back into films more because I've fallen out of love with films with all the remakes that are going on. But I know that there are filmmakers out there making original stories, although The Northman is not really an original story. In fact, it's a very, very old story, which is the story that Hamlet is based off. But you know what I'm saying, are doing new, exciting things with film. They just happen to not be, not get the biggest budgets, I guess, and not be like the big blockbusters. But I definitely wanna explore more film because um, I know that there are filmmakers out there doing their damnedest to make really good films still. So, um, and I would love to chat more about it with you. I don't really know anything about film. Wow, it's really annoying the focus on this bloody camera. It's driving me crazy. Okay, I put us in manual focus in the hopes that it will stop focusing on things other than myself. I don't really know anything about film, but I'm hoping that my sort of... Um, familiarity with the storytelling and personal taste in aesthetics and that sort of thing um, means that I can chat to you about film in a semi-articulate fashion. Um, that makes it sound like I'm going to do these amazing reviews, but I'm definitely not. I just want to chat to you more about films that I'm watching and try and watch more. However, Ines is, is sleeping even worse at the moment. I'm not really getting much of an evening. I think I'm getting about 40 minutes to an hour, which is just enough time to put a wash on, make hot chocolate, have a shower, um, and that's about it. So I'm not getting a lot of <laughs> viewing time. Um, we'll see. Anyway, the Northman. Uh, wow, I mean, what a journey. As I said earlier, very, very intense. I had not even watched a trailer for this. I just read the synopsis and I was like, well, it sounds like my kind of thing. And obviously in my brain, I'm thinking the Greenlanders. <laughs> it was not like the Greenlanders. It was much more of a kind of traditional macho Viking story, whereas the Greenlanders is unusual. It's a book by Jane Smiley, by the way. I talk about it all the time um, because I just love it and I think it's an underrated, 
underrated classic. It's a very like quiet book, that one. Not a huge amount of drama, there is, but it's quite kind of played down. Yeah, it's kind of like about farm life, farming life. Um, and anyway, <laughs> so the Northman was not like that at all. I was expecting it to be in this kind of like silent, basically silent film with lots of nice shots of um, like Iceland and uh, for it to be really, you know, beautiful. And there was, there were some really nice landscape shots in there, but yeah, it was much more the macho Viking tale. Um, and yeah, bloody, gory, intense, violent. If you don't like those kind of things, you're not gonna like The Northmen. Films these days are very, very long. You know, how am I supposed to hold my bladder for that long? But anyway, it's funny because I've seen a few criticisms of it, of people saying that it is this like super macho, sort of toxic masculinity vibe. Um, and sometimes I'm just like, are you watching the same? Well, it is about toxic masculinity, I think, but I think it's very much a critique of toxic masculinity. I guess you have to ask, like, is it a good thing to have something that could be read as toxically masculine uh, without any critique? But I definitely think the whole film, to me, was just like, men are ridiculous. That's how it felt. And it was so overdramatic and so... Um, macho that it almost became like camp at times and you know the conclusion of the film I feel like is very open to interpretation on that point as well. I also really liked the like heavy um, mysticism of it it's like it felt like a strange viking acid trip. I feel like it's probably not gonna be for everyone but it's enjoyable I think even though it, I was wincing. If you'd put a camera on my face throughout that film it would have been probably quite amusing. It was like Hi my loves, editing me coming in to say, hey, I'm filming on photo booth. Are we in 2008 or what? I have since, since I said this, since I watched The Northman, have since read a really good review in The New Yorker by Richard Brody. Um, and I think I kind of agree with it. And he kind of just concluded basically that it was quite a superficial film. And I think that might explain why I kind of enjoyed it on the surface level, like it's a revenge tale, but maybe why I didn't like feel very passionately about it. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that down below. I just thought it was a good review. And yeah, although I do think it does critique toxic masculinity, at least in my viewing of it, I think it probably doesn't have the depth that like a really good movie should have, if you know what I mean. So. I'll leave a link to that down below so you can read it yourselves, but I just thought I'd mention that because, yeah, my views have changed in the preceding days following watching the film. Also been playing around with my rings all day. I really like these two next to each other. So this band I already had, um, hang on, I'll actually have to refocus you. There we go. Um, how nice do those two like look together? I love 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 I think it's just because the textural thing with the like with the like fluting I don't know if that's the right term the fluting on this and then the like smoothness of this but they're both quite thick love it also been admiring these bangles again and I've just thought to my, I was just thinking to myself like how nice is it that they're actually like wrist shaped like they're oval so this like plain old bangle that I have that I've actually warped <laughs> which you would not get with these because it's, you've got the best of this kind of bangle, which actually is wrist shaped and you put your like obviously you put it on your wrist like that But you've also got the best of like a proper bangle But the ones that are circular like I said because I've got small wrists and small hands They've never really worked for me like they slip off they come down halfway down my hand and really annoys me whereas these um, You're not gonna get that so you've got the best of both worlds and I think it would make a lovely gift of the engraving element as well if you did want to engrave one so that's just some more thoughts from me having worn this jewelry all day but anyway my loves i can hear a baby going downstairs so not long i think until i'm going to be called and then yes gonna have a shower get ready for bed me again looking a little bit less cute <laughs> with my nightly hot chalk i'm about to head to bed i'm gonna sit down, read a bit of Duck Feet. Um, don't know if I told you I was reading this. I don't think I have, but I did include it in um, my last vlog um, because I bought it fairly recently. I bought it in Edinburgh 
It is a coming of age tale. So I'm enjoying it so far, but I haven't really got very far because it's been busy, busy, busy. Sorry, you can hear the white noise again, can't you? It's always really annoying when I edit it back, but I'm so used to it that I barely even think about it. So yes, I am headed to bed. I can definitely feel a tiredness creeping in and I've been speaking about this a little bit recently. I'm gonna continue speaking about it because I think it's something that affects a lot of us, but I can feel that like second half of my cycle fatigue setting in. It's different from normal tiredness, obviously. <laughs> As I've said, I'm tired pretty much every day because um, I got a baby. Um, but I can feel that fatigue setting in and the energy that I had seeping away and it is so frustrating because you think you should be as productive on one day as the next if you are, you know, not ill in any discernible fashion. Um, but it's just sadly not the case for me. You know, my cycles, if you've missed me talking about this, um, my cycles really affect me. I get quite severe PMS and a lot of fatigue. It's been um, yeah, a lot of fatigue recently. So I'm gonna be easy on myself, probably tone down the exercise a little bit, do more rest, do more restful work activities too. But I think with that, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Definitely check out Arcade if you're interested. It's nice to have those sorts of places in your back pocket with London. Like if you have, you're in a bind and you need to go somewhere in the Tottenham Court area for food, Tottenham Court Road area for food. To be fair, obviously there's loads of restaurants around there which are fantastic, but that place, it, I think it would be really good for kids because they have a children's menu and there's quite a lot of space and there's lots of variety. So if you're with like a difficult group or something, um, everyone wants something different, you can do that. It's very convenient. Like I said, you QR code stuff to your table. So for certain situations, I think it'd be great to know about. So definitely, and also just in general, if you want to try lots of cuisines and try some great food. Anyway, my loves, I see twitching in the cot. So I'm going to try and do a little bit of reading before I have to head downstairs. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you again very soon. Bye.